This public hearing is now called to order. Uh, wala pa akong ma-acknowledge. So, nandito pala si Ms. LV. Yung walang kapaguran for the good of our commuters. So, traffic, pero wala tayong masakyan. May masasakyan man, minsan kolorum naman. Ito na ata ang kinatandaan ng sistema ng mga commuter sa Pilipinas. Ayon sa datos ng Land Transportation Office, may mayroong humigit kumulang 19.2 milyong motorsiklo sa bansa. This is roughly 87% of all registered motor vehicles as of 2022. Imagine na, 87% ito. One out of three Filipino households own a motorcycle and 51% of them use it for livelihood. As early as 2018, the senators have already called the Department of Transportation to consider the legalization of motorcycles for hire in the same way it recognized new forms of transport services under Department Order Number 2015-11. This is to promote mobility. While they did not take this track, we appreciate that our transport agencies kept an open mind on the possibility of motorcycle for hire in the country and for spearheading a pilot testing. A technical working group which conducted the pilot implementation on motorcycles for hire, more commonly known as motorcycles, motorcycle or MC taxis, was deemed as the best option for the government to determine if indeed the Philippines is ready for a motorcycle taxi regime. Kung baga, trial period. Para malaman kung swak sa ating pangangailangan natin before we fully commit to it. After more than four years of continuous studies by the TWG, it now appears without a doubt that commuters are overwhelmingly in favor of legalizing motorcycle taxis. The latest TWG survey reports a whopping 96% of the motorcycle taxi passengers surveyed believe that the government should allow motorcycles as a mode of public transportation. Commuters favor MC taxis' affordability and quicker conveyance time in our clogged streets of urban centers where MC taxis were allowed to operate. Riders, even habals, lobby for a legal regime as it stands to give them a viable source of income and livelihood. Before I continue, I'd like to acknowledge our hardworking Vice Chair of the Committee on Public Services, Senator J.V. Ejercito. Interestingly, going back, Interestingly enough, as regards the question of who should regulate this new species, the TWG study proposes to give the jurisdiction over MC taxis to LTFRB for operations within metropolitan areas and to the LGUs for all other areas, not much different to the current regulation of tricycles. This is something that we can discuss as policymakers. To me, this pilot study is the strength of this policy. Maaga pa lamang ay nakita na natin ang implementasyon, ang mga gaps sa implementation so that regulators have enough time to come up with solutions or interventions to improve its regulations once legalized. Now that we are convinced of the need for MC taxis, new questions crop up. Are we now ready to welcome more players? Is it time for the TWG to conclude its pilot study and submit its final recommendations to Congress? The biggest issue from then until now is the safety aspect. The most recent global status report for road safety of the World Health Organization Nearly 30% of all road crash deaths involve powered two- and three-wheeled vehicles such as motorcycles, mopeds, scooters, and electrical bikes, e-bikes, and the numbers are rising. This is even higher in Southeast Asia where 43% of all road traffic deaths involve two- and three-wheelers. The established vulnerability of motorcycle as a mode of transportation calls for the government to step in. We need to legalize 
to reflect the reality on the ground, but we also need the highest safety standard to make this a true mobility alternative. Today's hearing is the first part of the two-pronged vision to not only legalize, but also create a regulatory and safety framework on the transport network vehicle system. Four years and a global pandemic later, we believe it is now time for Congress to use the data points from the ground to craft a policy that is responsive to the needs of the commuting public and all the stakeholders of the ever-growing MC taxi industry. I would also like to acknowledge one of our team members, <laughs> Senator Nancy Binay. Uh, thank you for being here. So with that, uh, perhaps uh, if any of my colleagues would like uh, to give a brief opening statement, Senator JV. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everybody. Uh, anyway, um, the we were um, by uh, we were uh, overtaken by uh, events because of uh, of the use of technology, no? And uh, it has been four years since uh, the provincial authority to operate was granted to the motorcycle taxis and the courier. Uh, and and other courier services, and I agree. I, and I'd like to thank the chair for already uh, scheduling um, this uh, this uh, hearing to hear the measures that uh, seeks to legalize already, so that there will already be a framework. No, and uh, I also agree with the chair that aside from uh, from the safety, I, I guess it's about time also that we look into other issues as well before we. Um, we uh, finally um, uh, seek to pass this measure. I also filed Senate Bill Number 167 upang masuportahan na pagkakaroon ng maayos na regulasyon ng mga motorcycle taxis or public utility motorcycles na is natitiyakin ng ating riders ay may sapat na proteksyon sa batas dahil sa pamamasada gamit ang kalang motorsiklo bilang pangunahing buhay. And likewise, we also have to look at the commuters that will be that will be making use of this. And likewise, Madam Chair, we saw the importance of um, the courier riders and the uh, motorcycle taxi, especially during the pandemic. I, uh, I would say that they are one of the pandemic heroes that without them, probably our economy would have been crippled totally and that uh, they played a big part in uh, at least... Um, Helping our economy, our businesses survive during the two years that uh, of lockdowns and uh, and uh, restricted movements. So, um, but again, our concern, um, I uh, I concur with our chair, is the safety and um, also other aspects no, of um, of uh, having to approve finally uh, so that they will have already a basis, a law that would uh, already cover. Uh, but again, uh, we cannot discount the fact that um, the couriers and the motorcycle taxis really played a big part and a big, a big role in uh, in our economy, again, during the pandemic. So with that, Madam Chair, I'm uh, here, of course, uh, to support you as always. And uh, we will. I'm here also to hear uh, our um, resource persons present. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator JV. Uh, before we begin, I, I'd like to ask the Secretary to please read the names of those present with their designation. And those of you who are online, please turn on your camera. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good morning, Your Honors, and to all guests. Allow me to introduce the resource persons for today's public hearing. To our resource persons, if your name is called, please raise your hand so our senators can identify where you are seated. Thank you. From the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board, the in, from the Interagency Technical Working Group on Motorcycle Taxi, Attorney Paul Vincent Austria. From the Land Transportation Office, again from the Interagency Technical Working Group on Motorcycle Taxi, Attorney Zoj Daphne Angustia. From the Office of Transport Cooperatives, we have Chairperson Jesus Ferdinand Ortega, from the Interagency Council for Traffic, I act, Mr. Charlie Apolinario del Rosario. From the Philippine Competition Commission, Mr. Kenneth Tanate, Executive Director. From the Metro Manila Development Authority, we have Engineer Dandy Bobadilla and Attorney Victor Pablo Trinidad. 
From the Philippine National Police Highway Patrol Group, we have Police Brigadier General Raul Bargamento. From the Department of Interior and Local Government, we have Attorney Gino Lavarias. From the Department of Health, we have Medical Officer Dr. Alexander De La Fuente. From the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, Special Investigator Ms. Fatima Milan. From the Department of Trade and Industry, Engineer Ariel De Inla. From the Department of Information and Communications Technology, present virtually, we have Director Carlo Morisha. From the Department of Labor and Employment, we have Attorney Sheena Lise A. Balite. For our motorcycle companies, from ANCAS, we have CEO Mr. George Royeca. From Joyride, Vice President Mr. Rico Meneses. From Move It, we have General Manager Wayne Jacinto, present virtually. From Grab, Senior Executive Vice President Mr. Yu Heng Lim. From Tok Tok, Operations Supervisor Ms. Princess Carla Estrella. From Easy Way, we have Chairperson Anna Micolanza and CEO Hans De Una. From Maxim, we have Mr. Andres Morales Jr., the President. From Lala Move, we have Head of Regulatory and Strategy, Attorney Joy Cabenya. And for Transportify Philippines, we have De Deputy Country Director, Mr. Noel Abelardo. For other commuter groups and um, motorcycle groups, we have from InfraWatch, present virtually, Mr. Terry Redon, and present physically, Mr. J.P. Redon of Public Health and Safety Policy Office. From the National Center for Commuter Safety and Protection, we have Chairperson Elvira Medina. From Commute, we have Ms. Toik Serna. From the Coalition of Filipino Commuters, National Convener, Ira Panganiban. From Move Metro Manila, the lead convener, Dr. Grace Gorospe Hamon. From the Motorcycle Development Program Participants Association, or MDPPA, President Mr. Nerminio Boying Mojica. From Rider Centro, spokesperson Mr. John J. Chan. From Visor Philippines, we have the mo their motorcycle editor, Mr. Andy Lutero. From the UP National Center for Transportation Studies, we have Engineer Eileen Mapala. That is all your chair. Thank you to our secretariat. Uh, before we begin, may I ask the this study? This was commissioned by the DOTR and uh, I believe the LTFRB or so. We don't have the chairman of the LTFRB present here today for personal reasons, but is there somebody from the office that can give us a gist of what this study is about? What is the final recommendation of the study? Nabasa ko na to, ah, pero gusto ko lang marinig from you for the record. Uh, good morning, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, on behalf of the Department of Transportation and Chairman at Attorney Guadis and ASEC Togade, I am the MC, uh, MC Taxi Secretariat. So basically, uh, the pilot study began in 2019, wherein uh, it was under the old administration. And then sometime in 2020, uh, when pandemic uh hit us, uh, the study was uh, suspended due to lockdowns for around eight months. So there were activities that were not pushed through. So sometime in 2021 or 2020, again, it was resumed. So the pilot study resumed again in uh, in the, uh, what do you call this, uh, in the authorized uh, uh, areas. Basically, there were uh, three chosen areas which were the uh, Metro Manila, Metro Cebu, and Cagayan de Oro. But uh, initially, uh, the study began in Metro Manila and Metro Cebu only. But this year, uh, one of the stakeholders, which is ANCAS, is now operating in Cagayan de Oro. Because uh, before Cagayan de Oro, the local government uh, unit of Cagayan de Oro did not allow due to pandemic. Only this year that they allowed uh, the MC taxi to join. So 
Uh, right from the beginning, uh, it started uh, with ANCAS, and then the previous administration had a vetting process wherein they chose uh, three uh, additional participants, and those are one is ANCAS, Joyride, and Move It. Up to this time, po, we only have three stakeholders, which are ANCAS, Joyride, and Move It. Po. So last year, uh, before the change of administration, when the chairmanship was still with the I Act, they submitted a report to Congress po, uh, evaluating and recommending that the pilot study or the motorcycle units are safe and uh, it can be feasible and can be legalized as a mode of public transportation. Now there is already a transition of administration and under Secretary Bautista, uh, he reconstituted the MC taxi and now the chairmanship is with the LTFRB. So the current admis administration so far is collecting more data and continuing the pilot study po. So yun po yung status po natin. That's thank a uh, thank you for the very concise uh, background on this. So the gist of it is, you are uh, recommending that this be allowed, uh, that it is basically safe, right? Madam, Madam Chair, yes, for your uh, Madam Chair. Okay, right now, how many are allowed to participate? How many taxis in Metro Manila, for example? Uh Basically po yung sa guidelines po kasi natin ma'am, uh, yung sa Angkas, Joyride, and Move It, tig 15,000 po yung sa Metro Manila na cap po. Although, uh, inallocate nila among themselves yung 15,000 which is 45,000 po. Pero uh, mayroong portion si Angkas na nasa around 20,000 plus, meron po si Move It. Basta hindi lalagpas sa, sa 45,000. 45, uh, so, so sa ngayon, hanggang 45,000 pa lang tayo. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, diba, yan naman, like Angkas, for example, can have more than 45,000 riders. As long as they're not running at the same time, ganun ba yun? Diba, may, may oras yan? Parang at any one point, in time, hindi pwedeng more than 45,000. Pero pwede namang mas marami ang members ninyo than 45,000, right? Basta hindi lang sila sabay-sabay. As a portion ng operations po kasi nila, uh, si Angkas po, parang yung pagka ginagawa po nila, pwede po sila magkasabay-sabay, depende po yun sa mga riders po. Kasi po, uh, up po yung ginagamit, ma'am. So, nagkakaroon lang po sila ng, kunwari, 8 hours muna yung first rider, second rider naman po yung susunod naman pong mag-ooperate po sa Metro Manila po. Um, may, may we ask, Mr. Royeka, what do you think about explain sa amin, 45,000 ang cap. Siguro yung share ng angkas mas malaki kasi mas malaki ang participation sa inyo, sa 20,000. But you can have more than 20,000 riders, right? As long um, as... So ma'am, uh, sorry I'm speaking this way because uh, I'm just recovering from a surgery. Surgery? Yeah, it's okay. Um, uh, <clears throat> uh, so ma'am, tuloy-tuloy po yung parang training pool kasi nawawala rin po yung bikers. But I think this is um, a gray area in terms of what you're saying right now. Um, typically, as it stands today, the cap is basically on, as I believe it, on all bikers that are registered. But nawawala rin po kasi yung biker because some are banned, some move on. Especially during the pandemic, many went to the provinces. However, with reference to what you said, which is correct, the motorcycle ride hailing system is not like a taxi. Yung taxi po, pag naglagay po tayo ng kota, yung, sigo, yung taxi po nyan dyan, nandiyan po yan sa daan 24. Kasi part-time po, gig economy po yung sistema ng motorcycle taxi. Which is why it's only a fraction actually that's online at any given hour, at any given time. Even during peak hours po. That's interesting. Senator Nancy is recognized. Madam Chair, siguro at the peak hour, ilang yung ilang motorcyclo yung nakalabas? Maybe as much as 30%? 30% um, of the 45,000. Probably. That is a good estimate. Yeah, it's not a lot. It's, it's not what you think. Um, even at, during the peak peak, kasi marami dyan, 
Um, the, yung tinatawag namin bakbakero, which means talagang nakatrabaho sila ng 10 hours to 8 hours na tuloy-tuloy. On the peaks lang ha, kasi may mga breaks in between. Usually it's just morning and afternoon. But a lot of bikers also don't want to go out during peak. Kasi maraming tao eh. Diba? Maraming kompetensya. And many of the bikers are part-time, which means they just um, get uh, somebody going to the office and then going home. Ang sinasabay lang. Sinasabay lang nila. So, ang papunta ng decision na. So, majority of the fleet are part-timers. There's only a few that are really full-time bikers, which is, which is really the concept of ride hailing. That's why it works so, so well. Um, so, with that, leading to this next question of mine, would you recommend that we increase the cap? Diba ngayon, 45,000. Sabi mo, 30% lang pagka rush hour. Um, what, what do you think, LTFRB? Are you inclined to do that? To raise it? Good morning, Madam Chair. Now, uh, I think this is a topic I discussed with, uh, by the way, nagkaroon, before this uh, committee hearing, nagkaroon po ng presentations, all the participants, and this was one of the observations by the technical working group that while we allocated a total number of 45,000 here in Metro Manila, uh, we learned that uh, ganun po, around 30% lang po yung tumatakbo. Now, uh, as far as the study is concerned, 30%, uh, we set the cap po, 45,000. Yan po ang naging parang basis natin for the study. Now, kung as reported po by Mr. George, 30% lang po ang tumatakbo. Uh, I, uh, this was an observation po that maybe we cannot get Kasi we are assuming po that tumatakbo po ng lahat, 100% yan, so that we can get a good uh, sample size. So for uh, at least my opinion, uh, Madam Chair, 30% po out of 45,000 is only roughly uh, 12,000. So I will consult with the other members of the, I will uh, inform our chair po, and consult the other members, but uh, whether or not the 12,000 is sufficient to gather data po as regards the safety and security of motorcycle taxi. Um, I, I, I know that uh, we're also worried about congestion, but there's really a lack of uh, mode of transportation for our countrymen. The important thing is really the safety factor. And I know that ANCAS, at least I'm made aware all the time, that they really train their drivers to uphold utmost uh, safety. Now, syempre, pag sinabi mong fatal accidents, talagang lugi talaga pag two wheels or three wheels kasi wala naman compartment to protect them. So, there's no argument there. there. You're really more vulnerable. But the reality is people still take that mode of transportation because of the lack of uh, other choices that we have with our very narrow and very limited roads. So, and in other countries, this has been legalized in Thailand, for example. Um, in other countries, of course, not. But here in the Philippines, ibang klase din yung density kasi dito. Eh. So, now, I... I know that uh, Mr. Royeka has uh, told the president that more jobs will be created. Ngayon, okay lang yun na mag-expand kayo na mag-expand. Basta the quality of training is not compromised. Then mag-accept kayo, pero dapat talagang train. So ganun din LTFRB. Look for a certification and a standard that these uh, hailing apps are requiring their drivers to have. And... At, at some point, makikita naman natin kung balasubas yung nagda-drive, di ba? Pwede naman talaga i-report. Pero so far, okay naman yung mga ano. My, my concern also, the, the Philippine Competition uh, Commission said na, uh, I'm not sure what your opinion is. Kasi Grab is trying to come in also with this um, ride-sharing app. Eh, we know naman Grab is already dominating the market in other areas. So, 
if they do come in or have they already come uh, have they already been admitted to this program i'd like to ask uh madam chair uh they filed an application but uh, they are not yet formally included as one of the participants in the pilot study madam chair didn't they buy move it buy into move it or joyride ko na alam ano bang Actually, ma'am, uh, that topic was also discussed uh, with the House of Representatives. Naging question po kasi kung si Grab is uh, in, uh, owned niya na si Move It. Ang naging position po kasi ng technical working group at that time is that yung authority kasi para malaman yung ownership, kung ano po yung personality, would not be from the MC Taxi po. Uh, gusto po namin siya i-refer sa SEC po or doon po sa Philippine uh, Competi Competition Commission. So on our end po, ang napag-discussion po ng MC Taxi nung mga ibang meet things po ay number one uh, dapat si Grab if ever man na talagang legal siya na kinuha na niya si Move It po nakaka-comply pa rin po sila sa guidelines po na inisyo ni MC Taxi Technical Working Group such as yung may facility po ba yung mga specs po ng mga motorsiklo yun po yung sa side po at concern po ni MC Taxi po okay um so the Philippine Competition Commission what is your position on on Grab joining in the pilot study or actually being a part of the MC taxi. Yes, uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, when that was referred to us, uh, given that uh, mot the use of motorcycle as public utility vehicles not yet uh, legally uh, in place, then we, we didn't, we didn't uh, comment on that. But uh, in terms of uh, joining or in terms of market situation more players would be better for uh, the consumers uh, madam chair and in terms of the concern on uh, the cap on the number of drivers and uh, motorcycles if we are going to apply uh, competition principles uh, no cap would be uh, better uh, given that uh, it would uh, uh, benefit uh, the consumers and let the market dictates uh, on the, yeah, the extent of uh, the number of uh, vehicles, uh, motorcycle units, Madam Chair. Thank Actually, that's an interesting thought. Uh, no cap is better. In other countries, in your study, obviously you have to compare to other countries. Like, for example, Thailand, may cap ba? Huh? Madam Chair, uh, hindi pa po namin explore yung sa portion po nung sa Thailand. Uh, maybe we can ask uh, one of the players. Are you aware? M Mr. Uh, Mr. Lim, you flew all the way from Singapore. Welcome to the Philippines. I hope your experience has been good so far. Please explain to us. Uh, in Singapore, this is not um, allowed, right? There's no. no Singapore is not allowed. The countries that are allowed uh, in, in the region that we operate would be Thailand, um, Indonesia, um, Vietnam. So is there a cap in those countries anywhere? Uh, no. Uh, in terms of slots, there's there's no caps for uh, motorcycle, uh, number of motorcycles in, in the countries that we operate in. So for example, in Indonesia estimates about um, um, 4 million um, um, motorcycle taxis uh, in the country. Okay. Well, let, let, let us acknowledge here the the one that really invested a lot from the very beginning, George Royeka, 2016 pa lang, ikaw na yung nag-umpisa nito. Diba? Ikaw, ikaw lahat eh. Tapos, ikaw ang dumaan sa lahat ng butas ng karayom para ito maunawaan ng ating gobyerno. Madam so, sir, tumanda na nga siya eh. Pa-attend ang hearing natin. Nako, borong nako. <laughs> hindi naman hindi naman mukhang tumanda eh. 'Yun ang importante, hindi mukhang tumanda. Um, 'di ba ang gusto lang what, what what we want when in investing in 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 any country. Number one is ease of doing business. Number two, predictability and transparency. 'Di ba? And then uh, number three is uh, I guess uh, that we that there's a rule of law, diba? Yun naman talaga, that, that is what we are trying to encourage here. So hindi pwedeng pabago-bago ng po policy, ah, diba? So if we see that something's not working to the detriment of our countrymen, then by all means, we need to make adjustments. But right now, I think that uh, it's my position also, uh, basta na-train 
you train your 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 drivers properly and then you reprimand them if they break the law we should allow more players to come in madam chair yes ah kas na question lang um kasama ba dun sa ang cast kasi ang dami ngayon diyan lalo na pagpunta ka diyan sa Mall of Asia yung parang hindi mo alam kung tricycle siya or bicycle or motorcycle siya na uh, na tumatanggap din ng pasahero is that part of your ano bang classification <laughs> ng mga ganong uh, foreign na vehicle na mukha siyang tricycle pero mukha rin siyang motorcycle <laughs> Uh, madam, uh, yung sa side po na yun, hindi po sila authorized po. Malamang po ito po ay habal-habal po. Kung hindi po sila authorized at wala pong batas, maano po sila ng kolorong po, ma'am? But, I guess, pare-pareho naman tayo. Nakikita natin yan, Madam Chair, tuwing pumupunta tayo dito sa Senate. Ito yung parang electric. So, anong classification natin dun sa mga ganong vehicle? At ito din ba ay eventually isasama natin as part of the uh, motorcycle taxis? Sa motorcycle taxis, two wheels lang ba talaga? Okay. So, Pero kasi na, may ganun na two wheels din, di ba? Uh, may, may two, may three. three. So yung three ba isasama ni George? Gusto mo? Um, Ma'am, that is a possibility. Um, yung three wheels po, actually the other operators are doing that in the provinces. Okay. May app po yung, yung tricycle. Kaso sa probinsya may ganon. But basically dito sa Metro Manila. Kasi yung, uh, Madam Chair, ang fear ko lang, kasi minsan I think yung mga nagdadrive nung ganong mga motorsiklo, yung parang na hindi naman talaga nag-aral. Yun na nga. <laughs> At parang nakakatakot kasi sila yung biglang susulpot na lang from nowhere. At... <laughs> Ay, um, ka na. Ah, hindi pa naman, Madam Chair. Pero... I may, Madam Chair. Siguro yung, uh, if I may, Madam Chair, I think yung sinasabi ni Sir Nancy, yung mga electric bikes na three-wheelers na minsan mga nanay nagda-ride, wala silang ano eh. Yung, I think, Madam Chair, we have to have another hearing with that because yun yung mga hindi talaga, walang training, no? Wala, at, um, and you can just buy it kahit walang lisensya. And it's not registered. Yun yung mga e-bikes na China, I think. Okay. Uh, nakikita ko rin po yan. Siguro, Madam Chair, we should also define kung isasama ba natin sila dun sa uh, motorcycle taxi. Yung mga ganitong types of vehicle. Alam mo kasi, dito sa, sa recommendation pag-aaral ng LTFRB, LTFRB will be in charge in metropolitan areas, but in the provinces, it's really LGUs. Uh, but in the interest of having something concrete that they can hold on to. For now, parang two wheels muna yung naano natin. Eventually, we can probably amend it. But so that they have a law that they can stand on, we will have to go with this study that they already have, which is more than uh, four years old. So, yun na muna. Pero tama ka, eventually, pwede naman kasi sa IRR eh, na magkaroon ng ano doon, area na for expansion but for now ito yon now before we hear from all the others uh, the transportation uh, commuters advocates i'd like to hear from the three and also from grab ano yung training method ninyo how many hours anong qualifications ninyo para sa drivers so let's begin with the very proactive i'm sorry i have to give credit talaga to george because he was the one that really braved this uh the environment of not being ready for something like this and educated a lot of us. So, George, why don't you have the floor? If you want, if you want, I don't know. Thank you very much, ma'am. Um, ako po, Senator JV, Senator Nancy, and Senator Grace. Ano po, malayong malayo na po yung uh, tema ng ating mga hearings from, from years ago. So, I'm very, very thankful. I'm on cloud nine right now. Na hopefully, Toics manapit na natin mapapasa po itong batas and also the commuter groups, Ma'am Grace. Um, uh, with regards to the training, initially po, we used to train for multiple days in the beginning. But what we realized is um, marami sa amin, because we, we used to fill 90% of all applicants. Kasi talagang hirap talaga sila magmotor. Kasi ang kinasanayan po talaga nila tricycle, na hindi naman nauhulog, pero pag tinanggal mo yung sidecar, iniisip nila, pwede na yun, 
na sanay na sila magmotor. So what we've done over the years is that we've um, fine-tuned our training module. We do a skills assessment first. The skills assessment determines whether this, this biker is advanced or not. And from the advanced level biker, we have a day of training. The training is not meant for you to learn how to ride a motorcycle. Kasi creme de la creme din po yung kinukuha namin ng no motorcycle taxi. Kailangan sobra mong galing kasi may pasahero eh. So hindi po kami nagtuturo ng ang paano ka mag, mag ride ng motorcycle. Tinuturoan namin yung safety mindset, um, uh, road rules, braking distance, um, and then we have practical exams and training on road conditions. So meron po kaming mga obstacles dun sa, obs sa course. If you, uh, pag, pag tinungkod mo yung paan nyo twice, you fail automatically. But it's a free training, which means you can go back and retrain. So we only train advanced riders, which is why we're able to bring it down from three days to two days. That being said, we're the ones that developed the curriculum of TESDA for motorcycle, basic motorcycle training. That is a five-day course from learning from zero up to becoming a beginner uh, motorcycle. So yun po yung naging training system. But we're also the ones that certify the test the trainers um, to train um, the motorcycle people um, as part of the test the program. So yun po yung we know work out namin with LTA Farb and with LTO right now na if we can institutionalize this training. Because right now, the training system that we've done, the courses that they've done, is also being used by the other operators. That's open naman po. That's being the, basically the standard now. So they have also um, refinements on that, but essentially it's the same practical course that we were, we've were we done. So, ma'am, I think, if, if I may, if we can just have one minute. Um, so for the last four years, we've been working on the safety aspect but we all know that there are other aspects to motorcycle taxis, and it's not necessarily just the app. You know, there are cooperatives also. There's a call center that you can do, any juridical entity, especially when you go, to, when you go down to the provincial. Um, the idea kasi is if it, they're recognized by the government, whether they're 10 bikers or 1,000 bikers, they're able to afford themselves benefits like insurance, right? Um, government benefits, um, humane laws, loans. Right now, loans are very, very high interest because they're not part of the formal economy. So I think having that juridical entity, not necessarily app-based, can be beneficial across the country. Now, the, the, the industry, although we've been operating for six years, four years regulated, is still very nascent. So we were in, for it we're to really... Um, achieve the maximum potential of 1 million jobs or how many 100,000 um, jobs that we could push. Um, we were hoping that we Congressman, Congressman Romualdo, talagang nag-ano lang, bumati lang sa atin lahat. Hi, Kong. <laughs> ano na meron na ito? Before. Teka muna. Uh, we might have to break for sure. a few minutes, ah. Oh, yung, yung one minute ni George, tapos the others. I want to hear also from Grab, but eventually might take a break kasi we have to go to uh, the commission on appointments. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, so, so mabilis lang po ito, ma'am. So what I was just asking for, since it's a nascent industry, we have to handhold the industry, um, which includes other aspects like um, taxation, um, how do we treat employment, um, and so much other aspects around this, no? Um, That's a good point. So you have uh, benefits. You give them uh, health insurance. Uh, we we have success. we have fringe benefits um, for our top bikers. We facilitate their ability to get pag ebig and SSS. We also facilitate for NBI clearances for new applicants. We have them in our office actually. It's a health insurance. I mean accident insurance. Mga yes, sir, we, uh, yes, ma'am. We have accident insurance for all. Hundred percent. Oh, I'd, um, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Senator 
uh, Rafi Tulfo, si Idol. Ayan, maraming, you, marami yan. Ma- ma- maraming matata. Ikaw na, ikaw na po yung may iiwan dito kasi may pupuntahan kami. Ang gama. <laughs> so, <laughs> I designate you Vice Chairman at uh, for this uh, hearing. So, but before but if, before that... So, uh, yeah, so ma'am, I, I was hoping lang sana that um, we... we yeah. And also fostering healthy competition because at the end of the day, it is a um, app. It there is a network effect. There is a competition on technology, and Philippines isn't necessarily the highest or the best in terms of uh, technological development. But number one in screen time. But number one in screen time. <laughs> yes, we have the best consumers, but we also want to be creators, not just consumers. So. That is just my prayer um, to the committee that we also take into consideration how do we monitor effectively the progress of the industry as it grows because this is where the real test is. It's not g- getting it approved. It's when it's on the ground across 20 players and there are global and local players, how do we now foster that the industry will be very healthy all the way to the end. At, at the end of the day, what we don't want is, after everything that's said and done, we have one player in the entire country. Yeah. I agree. You know what? Thank you for having that foresight. It's just not now. This is a developmental uh, initiative. Including me, po, Mama. I'm talking about myself also. Somebody needs to watch us also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, we're watching you also. Um, you set the tone uh, in a lot of ways. Um, Senator Tulfo, what we're discussing here, um, there are three major players in the pilot study, as you know, Move It, Joyride, and of course, Angkas. So, tinatanong po namin sa kanila, ano ang inyong um, uh, training for your drivers? Ano ang uh, kasanayan na ginagawa nila para ma-insure ma- ang ang kaligtasan ng kanilang mga pasahero. So nagpresent na si George ng Angkas. I'd like to hear naman from Joyride and then move it and then later on Grab. The Grab is very ambitious. They're saying that they're going to create 500,000 new jobs uh, in different fields. So uh, Mike lang, please give that um, update. And then I will leave na the floor to... <laughs> Senator Tulfo to ask his questions and we can come back. We just have a uh, commission on appointments. Let's go with Joy right now. Magadang maga po, uh, Chairperson. Uh, magadang maga po, uh, Senator and the members of the committee and uh, mga kasama namin. Yun pong sinasabi ni George, the training program. Ano po yun? Standardized po yun eh. All our trainers are actually accredited uh, internationally and here, and locally. Um, sinusunod din po namin yung programa, the program that was put together by the TESDA. Uh, so it's really a standardized training, pag sinabing training sa skills. Um, what we want to do though is to go through the developmental process of a biker. In other words, bukod po dun sa isang araw na nandun sila at tinetest po namin at tinitingnan namin ang skills nila, patuloy po yung training program habang nagsiservisyo po sila. Uh, yung po ginagawa ngayon namin sa Joyride, meron po kami mga marshals na umiikot sa Metro Manila, 24-7 po yan. Mga grupo po na hindi alam ng mga bikers, ido-obserbahan sila. At tinitingnan din yung pamamaraan ng pagsaservice. Kasi po yung service hindi lang naman po yung pagsakay ng motor eh. Kundi pati po yung pag-aalaga ng uh, uh, mananakay. As a matter of fact, what we would like to look at, and we always believe, you know, uh, life is a journey. And what we want to do is in everybody's journey, we want that journey to be a joy ride. In other words, the experience... <laughs> The, the experience po and when we talk about joy it's the experience of safety it's the experience because naniniwala po ang motorcycle taxi hindi lang naman po nagpapadala o nagdadala sa isang lugar kung hindi sa isang kahihinatnan our 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 customers would go to school to work and so what we want to make sure is when they go to school and they go to work, they're not frazzled, hindi masama ang pakiramdam, hindi kinakabahan, relax lang sila para magawa nila yung dapat nilang gawin. 
Kaya po yung mga drive bikers po namin na ginagawa namin, talagang uh, sineshepherd po namin practically sa kalye. So bukod po doon sa pagbabantay, doon sa mga negative, mga tinitingnan. Kasi po pag nakakita po kami ng ganun, automatically pinapatawag po namin yun. Kasi po uh, meron po kaming grupo na wala rin gagawin kung hindi isineshepherd sila. Uh, ito yung nakita, ito yung na-report, ito yung sitwasyon. And explain Can I ask? Kunyari nagkaroon ng aksidente, yun bang pasahero ninyo ay uh, merong, merong ano, parang insurance dun sa kumpanya niyo? Meron po. Okay. Uh, meron pong insurance. Uh, we are very happy to stay. Naisip nga po namin. Sir, huwag nang pasikot-sikot. Pakisagot lang. Sorry. Opo, meron po. Huwag uh, yeah, nang i-advertise yung company mo. Uh, uh, Opo, pasensya na po. Huwag nang pinagubula dito. Okay. Uh, meron uh, po. TPL o comprehensive? Uh, yun po dung sa ano, uh, comprehensive po dun sa insurance aksidente. So, ano ba maaksidente po yung customer, meron po silang insurance. Okay, so, in short, comprehensive. Opo. Lahat po kayo. Comprehensive ang coverage. Okay. okay. Eh, kasi papaikuti mo naman, baka may uh, mag-advertise mag mo naman yung iyong kumpanya. Oo. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Hindi, ka alam mo naman, pag nag-joyride, minsan, di ba, delikado rin. Pag... Oh. <laughs> Hindi. No, okay. So, uh, continue with your... Just make it brief, all of you. And uh, Senator Tulfo will set the tone now because may CA lang ako. Oh, okay lang. You can ask the questions. You can ask them to continue or you can start asking your questions, sir. Oh, okay. Um, sa status um, na meron ngayon, na I'm sure alam niyo ito, ilan na ho ba ang nadisgrasya Unpisa natin sa angkas na mga riders ninyo. At ano po yung nangyari doon sa mga disgrasya? At ano po yung ginawa nyo doon sa rider? Um, Sir. Good, uh, good, good morning po, Senator Tufo. I apologize for the way I speak. I'm recovering from surgery. No, that's alright. I can understand yeah. that. Go ahead, sir. Um, so, we've been operating for six years. There have been accidents. Okay. Um, we've maintained, and this is audited by KPMG, which is third party, a 0.003% accident rate. So that comes out to... Uh, uh, what year did you start? Uh, 2000, you, you this January 2017 po. 2017? Yeah, so... Okay. Noong year 2017, ilan po ang nadisgrasyang rider ninyo na may kasamang pasahero? I don't have the exact amount, but roughly siguro less than mga 300 below at that time. 300 below? Uh, they're about, sir. Uh, but okay. Yeah. 2018, ilan po? So, so ng ngayon po, every every year po yan. Uh, Tumataas ba? Kasi I'm, I'm tum leading to... Tumataas po kasi yung to... ride, yung tumataas po yung ride, yung bookings. Right. So, syempre, as a, we've maintained the percentage, pero tumataas po yung absolute number. So, right now, it's below 1,000 a year. Parang no, ang, ang gusto ko lang kasi malaman, and then I'm yes, sir. going to ask all the other uh, uh, companies, bumababa ba o umaakyat yung naaksidente ng mga riders din yun na may kasamang pasahero? So, with reference to the number of bookings, gumaganda po yung yung accident rate namin. Bumababa yung accident rate. Bumababa. At yung absolute number po, kasi dumadami po yung bookings, tumataas. Pero yung accident rate po ng accident, bumababa. Okay, kahit na dumadami yung bookings, sir, kung uh, nag-iingat kayo, pala constant hmm. yung reminder nyo. Then mababa po yung rate, yung accident rate. Sa training. So bumababa yung, yung accident rate. Yung numero yes, ng accident sir. rate. Yes, sir. Okay. I don't think so. Oh. K kasi, sir, eh, no 2020 3307 motorcycle road crash incidents and then uh 2021 3069 and then 2020 tumaas ng 7500 siguro ito total total yan sir right sir yung po yung hindi po dumaan sa operator or sa training po namin which is yung case, yun yung po pinipleed namin na case pag dumaan po sa training yung driver at yung training po na ginagawa namin na safety training nababasbasan po siya ng safety uh, uh, learnings or way, ways, uh, safety mindset. Gumaganda po yung pagtakbo niya ng motorsiklo. 
Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Doon po sa sinasabi niyong comprehensive insurance, accident insurance ito, yes, sir. magkano po yung coverage? Sir, um, we have uh, 200,000 um, for medical reimbursement and 500,000 to a million death and dismemberment. Ano yung sabihin ng medical reimbursement? Uh, ano po yun? Um, pag binigay, so, hospital kasi, yung claims po kasi matagal eh. So, kunyari, ina-advance po namin or ina-advance nung, nung biker, for example, nandun po siya sa hospital, um, after, yung, pwede mo i-claim against yun, i-reimburse po yun ng insurance company. Okay. Yeah. How about dun sa pasahero? Kasama po yun, same. So, ibig sabihin, mag-gastos mo na yung pasahero ng kanyang hospital hospital hospitalization and then i-reimburse nyo? Iba-iba uh, po. Most of, the most of the cases, kami po talaga yung nag-handle. Kami yung, yung nag-advance in most cases. Uh, ayoko po in most cases. In all cases, dapat. In all cases, dapat. But sometimes kasi the, 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 yung pasahero mismo talagang nagkukusa na po. Eh. No, there are yeah. so many instances na, na nakatanggap ako ng mga reklamo na yung pasahero ang nagpapaluwal muna dahil ang hirap kausap ng mga kumpanya tulad ninyo kaya sila nang napipilitan na magpaluwal ng pera well, we'll so what i want is dapat kapag may na aksidente na rider ninyo na may pasahero agad-agad pupunta kay sa ospital agad-agad bayaran yung hospitalization sagutin niyo everything wag niyo na pong entayin na magpalabas ng pera yung na aksidente ninyong tama po yan senator Gulfo. in fact um meron po kaming um, emergency fund um, that is 24-7, and we have partnerships with 50 hospitals. In fact, before, what we realized, um, Senator Tulfo, is kung motorsiklo po yung accident in some of the hospitals, humingi po sila ng deposit. Kaya po talaga nag-partner kami with the hospitals na pag motorsiklo po ang kas po yung accident ito, dire-diretso po yung um, care ng doktor. So we, we really endeavor to make sure that we cover that po. Um, no, no, no ifs, no buts. Okay. Um, Mr. Jesus Ferdinand Ortega, kayo po ang Chairperson of Office of Transportation Cooperatives. Ano po yung ginagawa ng inyo pong kooperatiba hinggil sa usaping ito? Yeah, uh, good morning, Senator. Uh, on the part po sa OTC, uh, naghahanda po kami kasi if when po magiging batas itong pag-aalaw sa mga motorcycle po na maging uh, transport po, no? uh, service ng ating bansa, uh, on the part of OTC, ang gagawin po namin, based on that new law, pwede na po namin irekomenda sa OTC board na magkaroon po ng kooperatiba po yung mga riders natin, yung mga motorcycle riders, uh, in, in the time na magkakaroon po tayo ng batas. Okay. Uh, meron pong mga habal-habal kung tawagin. Of course, hindi kasama itong mga angkas, itong mga legit na to, si Grab and all. Uh, especially sa mga probinsya na nag-aangkas na nagpapasakay ng mga pasahero, dalawa, tatlo, pang kuminsan, apat. Uh, wala ba kayong ginagawang uh, move against this? Sino ba dapat ang enforcement? Meron ba tayong taga-enforcement dito? Taga-LTO po kayo? MMDA. Kayo po ay LTO. Kasi ang MMDA sa Metro Manila, usually rampant itong sa sa mga probinsya. So, LTO, meron kayong ginagawa move against that na very, na, napakadelikado. At least sila, isang pasahero lang. Yung mga habal-habal, kung tawagin, tatlo, apat, tapos may mga karga pa. Meron sa harap, one, meron pa ako nakita, one, two, three, four, five. Kasi meron pang konting bakal sa dulo, upang pa yon. And, nangyayari yan palagi sa mga probinsya. Wala ba kayong ginagawang move against this? Practices. Senator Tulfo, yung sa portion po na yan, dahil po may enforcement power po si LTO, sir, yung mga enforcer po namin nationwide, sir, dinadirect po yan ng aming assistant secretary na para pong mas lalo niyang uh, i-strengthen yung paghuli po dun sa mga unauthorized po, kagaya ng habal-habal po. So kapag ganyan po, meron pong mga in-impose na penalty po, nag ang violation po nila for that ay colorum po, kasi po hindi po yun allowed po. So, and even while we speak, nangyayari po ito sa iba't ibang mga probinsya. Pagbaba mo ng mga airport, pagbaba mo ng uh, pier sa barko, uh, nandun na itong mga nag-offer ng habal-habal at bukod pa sabi ko, tatlo-apat na pasayro, may, may karga pa. So, dapat magbantay kayo sa mga pier, sa mga airport, sa mga palengke. I don't think you're doing it. 
pwede kayo makipag-coordinate sa mga taga uh, traffic enforcement group ng iba't ibang LGU. Are you doing it? Ang enforcers po namin, meron din po silang coordination with HPG and PNP po. Meron po silang mga dinideputize po from HPG and PNP po. Pero kagaya po nang sabi niyo, Senator Tulfo, mas lalo po namin pagtitibayan po yung pag-enforce po. Ng ano po ginagawa ng inyong flying squad? There's such a thing as flying squad, di ba? Ano, ano, hanggang forma lang yung flying squad nyo? You guys are doing... I, I, I don't see flying... Wala ko nakikita ng flying squad na gumagalagala sa mga kalye natin, sa mga highway, or even sa mga probinsya. Hindi ko nakikita. May nakikita ako, flying squad, eh, sa mga checkpoint, and then may nakalagay dyan na lata, at yung mga dadaan, ah, may hagis lang na tumutunog. Seryoso, seryoso. Yes po, Senator. Oh. Uh, actually po, Senator Tulfo, ngayon po, uh, yung sa LTO po kasi may mga operations po siya. Although isa pong kakulangan po namin sa ahensya is kulang po yung mga enforcers po namin and manpower po namin. Kung kulang nga po yung inyong enforcers, ma'am, all you need to do is makipag-tie up kayo sa mga, binanggit mo na, uh, traffic enforcement group ng iba't ibang LGU, HPG, PNP. Why didn't you do that? Kasi, Every single day, like I said, even while we speak, pumunta ka sa mga pier, pumunta ka sa mga airport, sa mga probinsya, nandoon nakatamba yung maraming motor at nag-offer ng habal-habal ride. At napaka-delikado po yan. Marami na po na aksidente niyan. Just imagine, apat-lima isasakay dyan sa motor. So, uh, so, Di ba? So, ano pong ginagawa nyo? Uh, sige po, uh, Senator, yung kagaya po na observation niyo po sa ahensya namin, ipapariting ko po ito sa enforcers po namin na mas lalo po nilang uh, ikutin po yung mga areas at saka ano, kung saan po yung mga dapat magko-concentrate po sila po para po mas ma-enforce po yung... Siguro, ano, ang cast, joyride, grab, ano mo to, maxim, takeover, tok-tok, um, lahat kayo, ba't din nyo nalang kumbinsihin Pumunta kayo sa mga probinsya, yung mga nagabal-habal para maging legit na sila, para they will, gagawin nila yung tama na hindi na sila magsakay ng, uh, Madam Chair, yung kinikwento ko sa mga probinsya, nakita ka na noon, na motosiklo sa harap ng driver, meron isa, yung driver, pangalawa, tapos meron siyang tatlong angkas, lima, habal-habal, yan yung totoong habal-habal. At every single day, maraming, maraming mga na-aksidente. Dahil dito, dahil sobrang dami ng pasayero. Kaya sabi ko sa kanila, eh, siguro, para mag ayaw ko naman mawala ng hanap buhay mga yun dahil nagbilis sila ng motor para gawing hanap buhay. Sinasabi nga nila, kaysa naman magnakaw, nandun na tayo, pero regulate natin. So, dyan siguro kay papasok. Siguro, i-recruit nyo mga ito, tapos turuan nyo ng tamang pamamaraan ng paggagamit ng kanilang motosiklo, bigyan silang lisensya. Why don't you do that? Di ba? Actually, Sen. Rafi, I'm glad you raised that point. Kausap ko lang si Congress Ron Romualdo ng Kamigin. Yun din ang concern niya. Um, masyadong unregulated yung mga ganon na wala namang proper training. Mm -hmm. Minsan nga, para yung mga may bahay, para magkaroon ng trabaho, yun ang ginagawa. Hindi naman sanay pa magmaneho. Mm -hmm. No, okay na tayo, mabigyan sila ng trabaho. Kaya nga, dito sa legalization nitong motorcycles for hire, Um, tignan natin eventually pa paano ba mareregulate muna. Kasi pwede naman kayo, di ba, nagkaroon na tayo ng pilot study para dito sa two-wheelers. Baka naman magkaroon din kayo ng pilot study naman doon sa mga ganong klaseng mga habal-habal. And in the meantime, baka yung mga big players natin pwedeng sumama doon sa pilot study na yon na kunin para magkaroon ng cooperative din yung mga yes. grupo na yon no yes. pero yun nga Sen Rafi eh yun, gusto na natin kasi ma-legalize ito para may batas silang kin, uh, tinatayuan at protektado sila at kanilang mga pasahero correct na protektado sila tapos pag nagpalit ang administrasyon hindi naman yung iba-iba na naman yung regulation pero pag sinama natin kasi yung three-wheelers, for example, or yung mga habal-habal, wala pang pag-aaral dun kasi. So, in the meantime, let's do a study there. But in the meantime, dito sa Motorcycles for Hire, itong batas natin dito, baka pwede na natin um, isulong. Sino ba dito ang kontra dito sa motorcycle taxis? 
May kontratista? Sino kontratista? Walang kontra. Ano, si, ano, si Miss LV, wala. Okay. Miss LV, ano bang feelings mo dito? Kasi ikaw talaga yung ever since. Madam Chair, um, I submitted my position, our position paper, and we said that we do not, we are not uh, contradicting it, but we would like to put in some of the um, guidelines so that uh, it will be a very robust industry. So we have submitted our position paper on it. Thank you, Ms. Elvi. How about uh, commute? Miss to to Toics. Hello po. Good good morning po. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, sa ang commute po has been uh, um, supporting yung regulation po ng motorcycle taxi. Our position has been since 2018 na. Uh, sana ma-regulate yung motorcycle taxi industry. Ginagamit na po to ng mga commuters. And I think the main problem problem really is kulang na kulang yung masakyan ng mga tao. People are already using it so magandang ma-regulate na ito so that we are better protected. And then I guess from hearing now sa sinasabi ng ating resource speaker sila George, I think ang hope din namin ng commuters is there are good practices now na ginagawa yung motorcycle company. Sana po yung ating mga agencies like LTO, LTFRB are probably taking note. Maybe these are some practices that we can help institutionalize. Magandang ma-institutionalize pa to ano yung ginagawa nila to uh, improve yung driving po ng ating mga motorcycle riders. Uh, that would be, you know, that would benefit everybody else, no? Hindi lang yung motorcycle industry. So I think these are really good points po. Thank you, ma'am. Madam Chair, yeah. uh, mayroon uh, yes, ako tatanong sa Grab. Uh, there was an issue of uh, overcharging in in fact, uh, you were ordered by the Philippine Competition uh, Commission (PCC) na mag-refund amounting to 24.45 million. Uh, yan po ba ay na refund na? Sir, ano Singaporean po siya, so. Oh. But I'm sure he he was able to get a gist of what. Did, did you understand what I said? Because um, there was an issue about overcharging. Okay, and the uh, Philippine Com Competition Commission has ordered Grab to refund your customers in the amount of 24.45 million pesos. My question is, has did, did you do the refund already? Has it been done? Um, um, thank you for the question. We we were trying to get guidance from the PCC on exactly how do we refund in a, in a proper way. So we're, we're happy that there's uh, now guidance being given and we can now proceed with, uh, with the refund. That you mean to say you were not given a guidance? All you received was a memo from uh, the PCC asking you to refund your customers. Yeah, so, that was it. Yes. Yeah, so um, the, we we had to we had different ways of trying to refund some of the customers. Um, we could not find them anymore, or they haven't passed through the the, the KYC. You process. cannot find the customers anymore. But at least you should have initiated something by contacting your customers because they're in in the applications. Yes, yeah, so we've, we've been con constant uh, engagement with the PCC to, to work with them towards how do we um, find the customers and get refunds. So we've, we've, we've tried and now we have... Madam Chair, who do. next time? Invite natin PCC. Kasi they were ordered PCC. Nandito po sila. PCC, okay. Thank you. Well, he said they were just waiting for the guidance from PCC how they would initiate that refund, how that would be implemented. Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Senator. So you just issued a memo to them asking yes. them to refund their customers without giving any more details about the refund scheme? Yeah, actually, we uh, issued the decision, um, um, Madam Chair, uh, sir, and uh, for them to also, um, the we provided guidance, actually. For example, they need to advertise that uh, refund so that those who have who don't have a wallet, because some of the beneficiaries don't have wallet, uh, um, Mr. Madam Chair, and so uh, uh, e-wallets. Uh, yeah, e-wallet. Um, so if those that uh, don't have wallets or will not report to Grab anymore, then the remaining balance will be remitted to that treasury, uh, government treasury. No. Okay, normally, huh? like for example, if you have a class action suit against a company like Facebook, I think, meron don, uh, Facebook will send a guideline uh, either through Facebook itself 
or in other platforms, maybe in your app, you can also send that and then they can register there. And then if, if uh, obviously, if you reach the maximum point of the amount that uh, was mandated for you to refund, then, then you're done. Otherwise, if you don't tell them how they can get their refund, they, they wouldn't know. I think you should be a little bit more proactive about this. How much is it that you need, you need to, to refund? 24.45. Follow-up question, Madam Chair. Yes, okay, you heard what he said, right? That when they issued the order for your company, Grub, to refund your customers in the amount of 24.45, uh, it was stipulated in that order how you would conduct the refund, and which is, to start with is to uh, uh, do a, an advertising. Did you do that? Did you advertise? Yes. So to so, let your customers know that you guys were ordered by PCC to refund. Yes. So so we have refunded as much as we can. Uh, oh, you have already refunded. Um, to up to about the, so seventy three percent has been refunded. Of oh, thirty three percent. Seventy three percent. Oh, seventy three percent. I thought you haven't refunded. Oh. In, anything at all well we have refunded since uh, uh you know the 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 um the imposition so we 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 managed to refund 73 percent there was another 27 percent in which uh we we were we were finding difficulty to refund how much is the average refund money sir uh i, I have to check i don't have the exact number right right now can, can it, you it's, tell? Very, it's very small amount because it's very small yeah okay what was the reason for the overcharging um um I will need to check that for you. I need to check that. For you. I don't have that information right now, but I'll, I can get okay. back to you. PCC, grab lang ba ang nagkaroon ng ganitong problema na nag overcharge? Yes. Uh, How about yung other Yes, sir, because uh, that's, uh, that is related to the Uber Grab acquisition. So I'm sorry? Grab over acquisition that's related to As the acquisition. four wheel uh, uh, drive uh, sir, vehicle service. So the original penalty uh, are. That need the original amount that need to be uh, re, uh, refunded, uh, sir, is uh, twenty four, and Grab already refunded around eighteen uh, million right. plus. No, no, ang tanong ko sir, uh, Grab lang ba ang nautos yes. magrefund? Yes. How about the other taxi uh, motorcycle? Sila lang, uh, sir, kasi sila lang yung may uh, ride healing up. Ah, okay. Uh, Th thank you, Mr. Madam Chair. Thank you. Magaling talaga magtanong ng ating ano eh. Kasama dito. Yun yung, yun yung concern din ng mga tao. No? But, but going back to the, the training for the safety of our passengers, uh, Grab, uh, Mr. Lim, are you familiar? What, what uh, training procedures do you have? Do you have the same as uh, Joyride and Angkas? We're very similar uh, onboarding trainings for, for our drivers. We have um, driver training centers. Uh, in fact, we also have... Um, uh, we, we also have partnerships with our investor Honda to also do in-house training. Um, what we also do um, in other markets where we operate two wheels um, is that we constantly monitor the behaviors of our drivers. Um, so if How do you do that? How do you monitor their behavior? Uh, using the app. So for example, if they make a, a, a sharp turn or they, they go above the speed limit. You have that in an app? It will show? Uh, we, we use that to track drivers. So if we find drivers are driving dangerously, we will then um, trigger alert to have them. No, that, that's why. So they have to have their phones on while they're riding. Oh, no, uh, so how, the, how do you determine the sharp turn? Is uh, that so, instant or just? Yes, yeah, so because uh, because they, they are using the, their phone and then when they're driving, we track their geolocation. We are able to detect that. So you have a command center? Yes, we, we, okay. we, we track. Ankas, do you have that? You also have that app that will um, determine uh, erratic behaviors. Um, we don't have it to that level, um, but we do have a command center and we have marshals all over. All right, go ahead, go ahead, grab. Yes, so uh, so beyond training, we also use uh, again technology to um, um, track um, drivers' um, safety performance and. Uh, trigger more trainings. Uh, we also do things like having facial recognition so that uh, whoever say he's the driver is indeed the driver who is doing the driving and make sure that then there's another layer of safety so that there are things in which um, we can we can offer from our experience in operating other countries and and bring that and also also share it with uh, with uh, everyone here. That's quite interesting. I didn't know there was that uh, capability to be able to determine the track record of a driver for safety. Madam Chair? 
Yes, yes, sir. Pwede makasing. Uh, meron ba taga LTFRB dito? LTFRB? Okay. According to an article uh, from the Inquirer, itong in-drive in Maxim that, is, that are still in operation ay uh, colorum daw. Maxim. Hindi to ka. LTFRB, anong findings, anong final findings nyo? Kasi ayon sa article di sa Inquirer, eh, colorum daw ito. Itong si Maxim. Kasi, kasi in, parang hindi sila kasama sa pilot study, di ba? Sa so, in-drive. So why 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 did we invite them kung sila ay colorum? Dapat yung mga colorum hindi kasali dito. Hindi, para malaman natin kung colorum sila talaga. Ah, okay. So, Maxim, ikaw na tatanungin ko. Colorum ka ba o hindi? Yes or no lang? Wala nang pasikot-sikot. Good morning, Your Honor. Um, no. At ba't mo nasabi na hindi ka colorum? Eh, sabi sa isang article, colorum ka dahil Russian daw yung, ano mo? Oh, Russian app. Russian-owned transport network vehicle. Your Honor, because we don't operate as a ride hailing, we operate as a delivery service po. As a what? We don't operate as a ride hailing, we operate as a delivery service po. Delivery as delivery. delivery. Yes. LTFRB? Pero nandito ka kasi... Yes, but... Um, Good morning, Madam Chair. Yes, because we have also a pending application to Ayon. be part of the study. Yun yung point doon. Sir, meron silang pending application to be included in the pilot study. Mm, eh, pero okay. may maximum na 45,000 lang sa Metro Manila. So, ang tanong, LTFRB, where this, uh, where is, what's the status of their application? Kasi ngayon, delivery lang sila. Wala namang maximum or minimum dyan. Ano na yung ano nila, application? Yes, Madam Chair. I would like to confirm that uh, uh, Maxim submitted an application po uh, to the MC Taxi Technical Working Group to be included in the pilot study. Now, uh, considering that under the guidelines, tatlo lang po ang allowed as of the moment. So, under deliberation pa po, whether to accept additional participants. So, Wala pa po tayong... Okay, let's say delivery lang sila. Pending pa application nila for the delivery company. Uh, sir, uh, oh, wala po sa jurisdiction ng LTFRB okay. yung Kanino delivery. Jurisdiction? Okay. Okay, so yung sa para sila yung magsakay ng pasahero... yung application nila ay pending. So, dapat hindi mo na sila magsakay hanggat hindi maaprubahan yung kanilang application. Yes po. Okay. With due respect, Mr. Chair, can I ask our legal department to answer or to provide some information about that? S Sige po. Go ahead po. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, in behalf of Max Taxi Philippines, we would like to also uh, ask some questions regarding the Definition. I, I of... think maybe Mr. Morales give way so that he can speak better. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. So good morning. Um, we would like to ask some clarification because in the definition of the proposed Senate bills, uh, the motorcycle for hire includes delivery. The motorcycle for hire for both delivery and. um transport passenger so uh, and then under the um the uh, other provisions it indicates that it is regulated by LTFRB so that aspect we want to clarify because currently now right now delivery is being uh if you are registered with SEC you're registered with the LGU you can technically um um uh, uh conduct delivery um activities but if under the senate bills it would uh, it would partake that uh, we have to register also with ltfrb the um the uh uh motorcycle for hire before they can operate so actually in our bill we didn't really differentiate between passengers and delivery so that's a good point uh we will clarify that But in the meantime, delivery is under DTI, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so thank you for that clarification. Madam Chair, follow-up lang question. So, meron na ho kayong ano, uh, permit 
Yes, sir. Uh, um, sub D are, from DTI and SEC. Yes, uh, under as you can see from our name, we are called Taxi Philippines Inc. So we are duly registered with the SEC, duly compliant with all the uh, yeah, submissions and everything. We are also registered with the BIR, and we are also uh, in all our different branches in the entire Philippines. We also have um, business permits. So. Um, that's why actually with the report that was released, it was the drivers were shocked because we all we all we all had branches in their in the Pero prior sa kayo po ma plug itong inquirer na nag operate kayo uh, bilang uh, taxi um, motorcycle taxi kayo po ay so, nag operate talaga nag nagsasakay ng mga pasahero um in in our um defense before um i think it was not clear um the basis for um ltfrb was i think hindi pa kasagot lang sir so uh, dati yeah. kayo po ay uh, nagsasakay ng mga pasahero hindi lang po ay delivery until sa such time na naplug ho kayo nitong diaryo so that was around 2018 sir i think that was the article that we were um by, uh, we were apprehend uh, the co the company was um called out by LTFRB and were right. subject to to fees. So that's why after then, we did not conduct the NC operation. So, uh, kasi sir, nung 2018, wala pa kasing pilot study noon eh. 2019 nag-umpisa. So, talagang wild, wild west noon. From so, 2016 to 2018. So, so Madam Chair, so nung may nangyaring violation sila, so an anong sanctions um, given to them by the government? Wala pa tayong batas at that time, LTFRB? Wala pa pong pilot study nung 2018. So, oh, okay. parang slap on the wrist lang muna. All right. Opo. Pero ngayon, sinisiguro nyo na yung mga sinasakay nyo, hindi buhay, ha? Oh, And yes. Uh, unless, we, are, I don't know kung, we are promoting that we are delivery pro, uh, okay. delivery activities only. Okay, kasi actually, nangyari yan, ha? Pag peak hours, di ba? Yung ibang delivery service, nagsasakay na ng tao sa... Uh, uh, Senator Tulfo. Nalaman natin, I think Lala Move was also cited for that. You're raising your hand, uh, NCR riders. Sino? Ikaw. Uh, uh, salamat po, Madam Chair. Uh, for clarification lang po, uh, sa statement po kasi sa ng Maxim na hindi na daw po sila nagsasakay ng passenger, uh, kung i-check po natin ngayon yung app nila, meron pa rin pong passenger. In fact, uh, majority ng operations nila is uh, nasa provincial. Recently lang po sila pumasok sa Metro Manila. Pero hindi po totoo na wala po silang passenger na services app. Uh, so, meron pong difference dun sa uh, pinopromote nila on public do, uh, in comparison dun sa actual operation nila. Nako, attorney, nagsisinungaling ka sa hearing na to? Ay, hindi. Pwede kang makontempt, ha? <laughs> no, no, mister. Uh, I, have, I have stated that um, currently we are only promoting um, promoting delivery. delivery. Bakit may app na ganun? Nakalagay ba uh, for passengers? So comment on that. What is um, that? Our our stand on that is that it's it's a, that the application itself is already um it's already international. So it's what is adapted here. So we cannot. Uh, we are trying to control. Magbook that. Ka nga. We are trying to control that. The TFRB, uh, this parang doesn't uh, begin with a. Uh... A nice relationship, di ba? Parang it's starting out on a sour note if they're already violating. Oh, anong sabi? How many minutes? Uh, details pa lang po nung rider, uh, pati yung plate number yung nag appear sa app. Pero, Pero tanungin mo yung driver, pwede ba tao sumakay dyan? Okay pa. Sige pa. Sige. Thank you, uh, Mr. John. No, Diba? Uh, Kasi we just have to verify what you're telling us is true. Uh, you know, I'm glad this issue was raised. Senator Tulfo, anong comment mo dyan? Maganda, go ahead. Uh, sabi mo na isa sa, kung pwede yung tao. Apo. Uh, sige po. Uh, for ano clarification sabi? lang din po, uh, may mga members din po kasi kami sa Rider Centro na Maxim Riders. Uh, ang concern po kasi namin dyan, uh, isa po sila sa mga player na pumapasok sa gig uh, platform economy na uh, ina-apply yung penetrating price. So, isang concern din po ito since ang focus po natin is sa public service, 
Uh, importante rin po na habang pinapangalagaan natin yung serbisyo sa publiko, eh, natitingnan din po natin yung mismong nagsiservisyo, which is mga riders po. Uh, in, uh, sa ground po kasi, ang ginagawa po nila, nagbibigay po sila ng sobrang babang presyo para ma-penetrate yung market. In effect po nito, unfair competition. So unfair competition po. Then yung mga rider naman po, tinatanggap to kahit napakababa due to unemployment na rin. Sa, sa hindi sila nakapasok sa ibang apps, kaya nagkakaroon po ng abuse sa ganong sitwasyon. Are you talking about delivery or yung... Uh, both po, uh, as far as Maxim is concerned. Dahil so, ibig sabihin, nagsasakay silang pasahero? Meron po. Oh, Maxim, nagsasakay pala kayo. Uh, actually, the position is, um, as we have understood, the the passenger, uh, the in the drivers are independent contractors. So, as I, I have as I pointed also by Sir Ritter, there are some times that they will take abuse or like what what was seen they are no, but the app abusing. is provided by you and the yeah. app is very deceiving we don't know for sure if they'll take passengers or delivery it doesn't state in the app if, I, if i'm not mistaken so uh currently i uh, we have also as as we have represented we are also um before ltfrb ltfrb is also um uh, LTFRB in a technical working group we are currently applying. So as of now, we want to make it possible that the the, the app can be vi a viable source. Pero, Sandra, Madam Chair, so how can we, how can you guarantee to us na hindi nga nagsasakay ng pasahero ang inyo pong mga rider? Ito na mismo, sabi ni Mr. Uh, John J. Chan, nagsasakay daw kayo and unfair competition pa, mas mura ang ino-offer nyo para makapanitrate kayo sa market, which is really illegal. So, LTFRB, uh, hindi ba kayo nagbabantay? Uh, yes, sir. Now, as regards uh, motorcycle taxi operation, wala po ang jurisdiction ng LTFRB uh, with respect to uh, complaints and violations po or, or may... it through the MC Taxi Technical yeah. so, Working. So maybe, Madam Chair, we have to go to uh, DTI. Or SEC, because they're in violation of their uh, no, uh, business practice. Meron nag-post, I was told that Maxim is the recommended app for motorbike rides, delivery services, etc. In Cebu, it is cheaper than Angkas. Oh, you have to try. So talagang, they have to answer for that. Oh, you're undercutting the market because obviously you're running illegally. Um, DTI, do we have anybody from DTI? DTI. Online? Gusto ko magsalita ni Mr. Chan? Oh, hindi ka kumikibo, Engineer Dain La. Morning, uh, Madam Chair. Um, I also have experience um, with the app. Um, meron po siyang uh, access on for the riding po. No? And with regards po sa data, we will verify with our other uh, colleagues in the business name registration if they have an existing um, Business uh, name for the. Uh... So in the meantime, what penalties can we give them? Mm. LTFRB. Nakita na niyo yan. Tapos DTI. Pero wala kayong ano no? Re wala kayong jurisdiction over them. So it's DTI. So do you have a jurisdiction? If Attorney. caught red-handed, siguro, Madam Chair. If huh. caught red-handed, then they'll be under the jurisdiction of LTFRB at po di sila penalized kasi pending their application. But for now. It should Kapulor be under sila. DTI. So, and Colorum, and then how about the PNP, the HPG, the LTO? Pwede na kayo manghimasok dito. Panguli nyo sila. Are you guys wearing uniform? Ano bang uniforme ng Maxim Taxi? Senator Nancy is recognized. Ah, with the permission of Senator Tulfo, hindi ko ba pwedeng i-down yung app nun? DTI. Or DICT. Uh, DICT pala. I-down pala muna ang I agree. It disable muna, it down muna yung ano, yung apps niyo kasi kolorong pala kayo eh. And ito may ebidensya na tayo. Senator JB, may, may mga nagre-report nga sa kanya. Paano so si, si, so si, sino ang pwedeng mag-down ng app, makapag-utos siguro DTI. DTI can you order Maxim to disable their app? Ah, uh, Mr. Chan. Ah, uh, gusto ko lang po mag-comment dun sa pag-down ng app. Although uh, sa part po namin, marami rin po si kaming mga rider na nasa Maxim at uh, the current time. Uh, siguro po, uh, pwede po natin munang i-review na 
wala po muna silang uh, hailing services for safety purposes talaga din po. Pero so, so Madam Chair, okay. uh, para i-modify natin yung capability ng app nila. Thank you Madam Chair. Uh, Siyempre, maraming hanap buhay ang nakasalalay dito. Send tool for... I, I know, Madam Chair, pero, ang, uh, pero how about the safety of the oh, passengers? Exactly. Hindi sila rehistrado. Yes. So, paano ngayon yan? Kasi kapag naka-accidente sila sa pasahero, hindi, hindi mababayar ng insurance. Kasi ang insured lang, yung, yung cargo, yung gamit na pinadeliver sa kanila. Oh, yan, the Mr. passengers are not protected. So, therefore, i-down na itong apps. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Morales, anong comment mo dito? Right, good afternoon, uh, honorable senators. Um, actually, with regards to uh, Maxim, Maxim really is a ride hailing company. When we started, since this is an international company, part of the company is international, so this is really a ride hailing company. So when it got business here that year, yes, um, we are really strictly telling riders. Because I am also a city manager, I also handle one city, which is Bacolod. In my jurisdiction, I have really restricted, restricted drivers from taking passengers. But what can you say about this incident? Um, for for this incident, um, Madam Chair, since I, uh, as what our, our attorney has said, uh, the app is open sourced. Um, we don't really have since these are third part. We consider riders as third party. We don't really have complete control of their, over them on what we do. So we really depend on customer complaints. If there are any customer complaints, then we block the log in the log in number of specific you riders. App, galing sa inyo yung app na yan, Yes, right? we have we have because. So how can you not control the app that you developed? Mm. Um, actually, Madam Chair, we have we're, we have been trying to. Remove. We have already instructed um, our IT department to remove this motorcycle because this motorcycle was the source of um, this booking, all right. And um, before there were uh, there were some how do you call it, man? Um, like for example, if you book motorcycle, there's a need for this option for choose to choose whether you have your own helmet or what. We have removed all those things because we don't want our our customers now to be booking. Uh, Maxim as a ride hailing, and we only you, we only uh, operate as a delivery service. Po. Pero so, excuse me, Madam Chair. Pero naman, Mr. Morales, hindi mo ba sinubukan uh, tulad ng ginawa ni Mr. Chan kung yung inyong mga tauhan ay gumagawa ng tama o mali? We have we have really tried, Mr. Chair. Uh, we have tried. Random, we have we have. So when you tried, uh, ano pong na? We have random ano chat and we found out that, but again, so nung on our na side, find out nyo na merong palang gumagawa ng hindi tama, which is nagsasakay. We block those. We block those riders, Mr. Chair. So why don't you continuous, um, continuously do it? We will take note on that and start e, today. Because, you know, random, ginawa, pumayag. Oh. Yes, but rest assured that starting today, um, we will be stringent and we will try to, um, uh, how do you call it? Because, uh, Madam Chair, I'm pro labor and everybody knows that. I would like to to inform everybody. Pero kung kapag na naman safety and security na mga pasahero at stake. Eh, doon na lang ako doon sa kapakanan ng mga pasahero na kapag na-discuss siya, eh, hindi sila protektado dahil illegal nga at walang hindi babayar ng insurance yung mga aksidente pasahero. Maging rider na lang mismo. Diba? Para sa kapakanan na rin ng rider. So, tama nga yung suggestion ni Senator uh, Binay na i-down na muna yung app uh, DTI hanggat hindi sila na-aprobahan ng LTFRB yung kanilang application. We can... What we can do, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Rafi, um, we can just disable that um, option, option for motorcycle. Mampala, so that means you haven't disabled it. Um, the so you left it there. We yes, 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 Madam Chair. There's issues already. At saka, Madam Chair, meron pang tricycle, eh, oh. Yeah, nga. Oh. So, for, alam mo, ayaw kong mawala ng trabaho yung mga nakasalalay dun sa ano ninyo. Pero pagdating nga dun sa kaligtasan, mahirap kasi... Anong standard ninyo? Hindi pa kayo na-credit. So ayaw ko naman mabuwag yung kumpanya niyo, pero alisin ninyo yung options na hindi kayo binibigyan ng permit. Ha, actually, Madam Chair, pag nagsara sila, andyan naman yung joyride, andyan yung angkas, sus Mario Josep, andyan yung tok-tok, o easy way, magsilipatan lang doon muna. Ngayon, kapag nabigyan na kayo ng permit, eh, pwede nang bumalik sa inyo. How's that? Sa ngayon kasi unfair competition. Yes, we will speak about it. Pinapatay nyo rin yung hanap buhay nito mga legit na mga riders from Joyride, from Angkas, from Tok Tok, from Grab, from Easyway. 
di ba? Um, Honorable Senator Rafi, with regards to the pricing, I think it's it's being dictated by the market. We don't really, we have some uh, prices. Uh, Mas kina, items. illegitimate kayo, kolorum kayo eh. No, we're talking about the delivery po. About the no, 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 dito sa pag, ano, pag uh, sasakay ng mga pasahero. Since delivery nga kayo, pero nagsasakay kayo ng pasahero, so nababiolate nyo yung inyong uh, permit, so dapat masara muna kayo for the meantime. Kasi ha, Kahit na i-down mo pa itong sabi mo yung nakalagay na taxi uh, uh, motorcycle, eh ginagawa pa rin pala ng mga rider mo yung magsakay ng pasahero. And again, ulitin ko for the end time, eh ang kapakanan ng pasahero ang ano ko rito, ang iniisip. At kapanan ng mga rider ninyo, paano kung na-disgrace siya? Na-aksidente, namatay. Ano mangyari? Pupunta sa wanted sa radio, magreklamo. Sir, hindi ako binayaran ng maxim. Anong gagawin ko sa iyo? 'Di ba? Ganun nangyari. Magreklamo yung Madam Chair na naaksidente yung rider, naaksidente yung pasahero tapos walang walang pambayad sa ospital yung pasahero dahil pobre, sisingil yung maxim, walang pambayad ng maxim dahil walang insurance. Alam mo uh, Senator Tulfo, yung staff ko nagtry na ng maxim ngayon. Pwede hmm. daw silang mag-ferry ng passengers. Oh, si? So, take out that option. Kasi Grab did it. Did, didn't Grab uh, remove that option for ferrying passengers? Yeah, we, we, don't, we don't have... Uh, so, they don't have, have it. So, why can't you do it? If you want to remain a delivery company, like uh, Lala Move... Um... With due respect, uh, uh, Madam Chair, yes, we will do that recommendation. When? ASAP po. ASAP. As in, okay, ASAP today? Um, I'm trying to communicate with our head headquarters and we we are doing that, that one right away. Today. I suggest also, Madam Chair, uh, alisin ang salitang taxi. Moro. Kasi people will still, when they see that apps, they say, akala nila taxi na pwedeng... Pwedeng uh, magsakay ng mga pasahero. Baguhin nyo muna siguro po the meantime. Yung pangalan nyo, ilalagay nyo maxim uh, for delivery only. Para sigurado. <laughs> maxim for delivery only. Oh, how's, how's that? Um, without due respect, uh, Mr. Senator, our real, our real name is Taxi Philippines Incorporated. Um, we are operating under the brand of Maxim Rides and Delivery Services. So we're just getting ready because we are also have pending application for TNC and MC Taxi. Hindi nga po, the meantime, di sabihin nyo, oh, it's, di ba, pasantila, pag pumasok sa application ninyo, bubukas yun, lagay kayo ng notice, oh, kami ay delivery only, hindi pwedeng pampasahero. Pending pang application namin. Para yung nagpunta sa inyo, ay wala pa lang ano to. Wala pa palang permit to. Pag naaksidente ako, yari ako rito. Tatawag na lang sa Grab, tatawag na lang sa Angkas, tatawag na lang sa Joyride. O sa Easy Way, o sa Tok Tok. O, siguro dapat magkaroon kayo ng abiso. Kasi, nung umpisa, pinapayagan ninyo, baka malito yung mga ano. So, in the meantime that you're changing this option, lagay kayo ng abiso. Delivery lang po kami. Yes. How's that? Yeah, we will do that. Can you do that? Yes. Yesterday? Today po. Today. Today po. We will do okay. that. We will be posting on our social... We will be doing that on our social media site po, IESAP po. Okay, good. You know what, uh, uh, colleagues, I think uh, we're, we're okay unless you have other questions. We, we are... JV, Senator uh, JV. Madam Chair, before we end... Uh, First of all, I'm also a rider, and I have seen the start from the start uh, under your committee. Uh, the time, Ma Madam Chair, na exactly hindi po ko pro ang kasan na kataon lang na itayong suot na kulay ko. But I have seen how uh, si na George then back then uh, we started. That's why we have uh, re we this committee pushed for the um, for the prov provisional authority for motorcycle taxis back then. Sa totoo lang at that time, Madam Chair, na, na ano rin ako nun. Ano yun? Uh, it was a risk because uh, as a rider myself, I know the dangers no, of being on two wheels. Ngayon, magfe-ferry pa tayong passenger. But um, Madam Chair, I had the experience, uh, sila George and the other um, companies, pinakita po nila sa akin yung training. No? Uh, I was, uh, I had the chance to see it. And being on the road all the time, pag hindi nakabisikleta, nakamotor, in fairness po, no? yung um, Grab, um, Angkas, Joyride, move it, lala move, 
most of these courier riders and tax, um, motorcycle taxis are more disciplined than the other um, riders on the road. No? So, in, in Madam Chair, ma'am, I'm a witness. Pero hindi naman lahat. Minsan may kamote pa rin lumalabas. Pero sana bigay niyo yung number so how we can report those drivers so that they can be um, um, blacklisted or at least ma-reprimand. But again, uh, Madam Chair, um, I'm very happy that uh, this pilot uh, authority that we have given, naging successful sa totoo lang, medyo nagdalawang isip ako nun, pero at least yung uh, uh, 0.003% accident rate no, is really something that uh, an achievement. So at least hindi tayo nagkamali, Madam Chair, in, uh, in, in uh, supporting this uh, pilot uh, authority to... to, uh, to uh, to operate. So I guess it's about time that uh, we already pass this measure so that they will already be, have a basis no, for operations. So you lamp Madam Chair. Actually, I would like to give recognition to George. You really professionalized this sector. So from the very beginning, you've always emphasized safety. Hindi naman sa binibigyan namin ng bias yung angkas. But but they were the pioneers. Sila talaga, they paved the way for all of you to come in. Kung hindi sila nakiusap, nag-explain, nagbigay ng example, wala lahat dito, joyride, grab, etc. for the ride-sharing app. So I, I, I hope we encourage more innovation and more investors to come in the country. Uh, but that's why we have to make sure that our laws are enforced. Because if the laws are not enforced, then there's not a level playing field. Nobody will want it. Nag Public Service Act pa tayo. Walang pupunta rito. Diba? So, Madam Chair? Yes, Senator, Senator Nancy. Before we end lang, meron mo bang pag-aaral yung DOTR kung ilang motorsiklo yung kaya ng road networks natin? Like, uh, can, our, can EDSA accommodate Five million motorcycles? May, may ganun ho ba kayong study? Because, Madam Chair, parang dun mag de depend yung gano kadaming uh, uh, motorcycles yung bibigyan natin ng, ng prangkisa. Kasi, remember, aside from itong mga motorcycle taxis, meron din tayong mga indi individual uh, motorcycles, which, ewan ko, may data ba kayo na ilan na ho ba yung registered motorcycles in the Philippines. Uh, Madam, um, yung sa, sa ano po, sir, number po ng registered motorcycles, meron pong data sa LTO po yun, yearly po. So, ilan, ilan nakakailan na po tayo ngayon? Uh, sa so year 2023 po, ang nasa datos po namin, ang total motor vehicle registered po kasi nasa around 13 million po. Out of that 13 million po, uh, nasa 8 million po yung mga motorsiklo po. But to be exact po, uh, Senator, isi-send na lang po namin yung exact figure po. So, at the moment, meron na tayong 8 million motorcycle. Apo, around 8 million po. Out of the 13 million motor vehicle registered with LTO. Po. Okay. And then, so, may ganun ba kayong pag-aaral? Kung... Uh, Doon po sa topic na nasabi niyo, ma'am, idadagdag din po namin yun as we go along with the pilot study po kasi hindi pa po namin yun na uh, na natatouch po yung portion of it. Sige. We should also consider, ha, kasi ngayon, as we increase the bike lanes, uh, isa pa din yun dun sa makakadagdag dun sa gagamit ng mga kalsada natin. Yun lang po, Madam Chair. Sir Ortega. Yeah, uh, sandali lang po naman to, Madam Chair. Like na-mention po namin with Senator Tulfo earlier. So on the part po of the Office of Transportation Cooperatives and the OTR family po, once ma isa batas or mangyari na po yung uh, pagtulong ninyo dito sa mga riders po na maging uh, legal po, uh, we are glad with a statement coming from ANCAS and uh, sa discussion po dito that uh, they are uh, interested na sumama po sa kooperatiba po yung mga riders natin uh, that will be of big help kasi magkakaroon sila ng mga economic uh, benefits under a cooperative po. And also in the future po, siguro po yung mga cooperative po, magkakaroon ng kooperatiba ng riders po para dito sa magiging batas. Yun lang po. Madam Chair, makasingit lang. Um, uh, LTO and also uh, tong uh, transport cooperative. Ano po yung plano nyo dun sa habal-habal? Hindi nyo pa ako nasagot totally. 
yung mga nasa probinsya na mga kolorom na nagsasakay ng apat limang pasahero sa isang motosiklo, what, what's your plan? Uh, Senator, yung sa side po ng kolorum, number one po kasi sa LTO, may jurisdiction po siya sa mga kolorum po ng habal-habal. Pag hindi po sa LTFRB, sa amin po sa LTO. So yung na, ang, ang penalty po for that is 6,000 po pesos and then pwede rin pong ma-revoke yung registration po nila at maari din pong ma-impound yung motorcycle units po nila for a minimum of 3 months po. So ngayon pong na pag usapan po natin dito yan, aside from i-intensify po ng enforcers namin yon kung uh, dadaan po sila sa due process po at uh, pwede po silang maano ma po ng administrative penalty. Pero uh, honestly, Madam Chair, ayaw ko naman silang makulong. Naghahanap buhay mo ngayon, may mga pamilya din yon, right? At yung motor na yon, eh, pinaghirapan nilang mag-ipon. Yung iba, inutang pa sa 5-6 para magkaroon ng motosiklo at gawing hanap buhay. Ang gusto ko lang siguro is to reach out to them. Tell them, educate them na bawal itong ginagawa nyo. Bigyan sila ng warning at meron namang angkas, meron namang joyride, meron namang grab na pwede kayo mag-enlist at maging legit na kayo. How about that? Come up with a program na para to reach out to these people, ito mga habal-habal. Uh, Senator, yung, uh, we will do that po, yung pag-reach out po. Uh, aside from that po, yung portion po kasi nung pilot study po natin, yung areas of operation niya po kasi, Metro Manila, Metro Cebu, and CDO po. So may mga ibang portions po ng habal-habal na hindi pa po siya na-cover ng MC Taxi po. Oh, so, so po ng iba oh, pagkakataon niya na, mga kumpanya na mag, ano kayo, mag-expand uh, sa iba't ibang probinsya. Marami sa Dabao, sa Bohol, sa Sambuanga, Kagayan, it's all over itong habal-habal. Malaking negosyo yan, angkas. O ba't di kayo mag-expand dun? Yes, sir. Um, thank you po, um, Madam Chairman. Um, in fact, uh, Madam Chairman, we already have um, an LOI for multiple um, um, provinces that's been really asking. Um, we will continuously work naman with the technical working group to submit those and try to see if we can do a small pilot, maliit lang po na pilot, um, uh, what I see po, no, once the yung batas matapos na po, there will be regional and local players. Hindi lang naman po ang cast, joyride, or move it, or grab yan. Meron din po magiging sa Pangasinan lang po, or sa Dagupan lang po. And we are willing um, to teach them. We want to be able to provide them a program for the safety. We want to teach the also the local op, potential local operators there. Kasi kung ano yung mangyari po sa kanila, sabit din po kami sa totoo lang. So we want to make sure lahat po safe, kahit yung mga malilit na players. So we're willing to offer, uh, okay. to share our expertise with it, them. Itong po yung gawin, LTFRB and LTO, give them a warning. Advertise na we're giving you until such, kunyari, three months na kayo mga nasa habal-habal, tumigil na kayo, mag-sign up na lang kayo kung ano yung preferred nyo na taxi, uh, uh, ride, motorcycle company, we give you three months. After three months, panghuli namin kayo. At least, you gave them warning. How is that, LTO or Mr. Ortega? What do you think? Or LTFRB? At least, naging mabait kayo sa kanila. Yes, Senator. That's a good suggestion po and we will do that, sir. Yeah. Uh, sa sinabi niyo naman po, uh, Ms. Uh, Senator, once mas uh, maging batas, batas po ito, ang gagawin po ng Office of the Transportation Cooperative, dahil yung mga habal-habal na sa probinsya, parang grupo na sila, sila po yung uunahin naming lalapitan para mas madali na maging kooperatiba sila dahil grupo na sila. We will guide them to be a more uh, to be a better organization pa. Thank you. Ipagbawal ng sumakay na maraming pasahero. Definitely. Isa lang, isa, isa lang. Oh, Nagita mo na yan, uh, Senator JV? Hindi lang, lima. May kahoy pa, kumisan, kumisan sampu pa eh. Madam Sir, yung may plywood sa gitna, di ba? May kahoy sa gitna. Yung may, para magbalanse. Napakadelikado yun. Ms. LV, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Senators, I would like to uh, put some input. We have had uh, our experience with the PUV modernization where the uh, old jeepney drivers were uh, already organized into cooperatives and they have learned how to become modern drivers using modern vehicles. So would it be possible that this Habal Habal follow the footsteps of those drivers who have been modernized and are already self-empowered in order that they can pursue the same kind of operations? 
and be legalized. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're, th that is noted. Uh, I'm sure that they can do that. But um, in the interest of time, Mr. Morales. Um, Madam Chair, thank you for this opportunity. I would like to inform uh, the body that um, that option for motorcycle riding in our app is, has been removed already. Thank you very much. Yeah, and so Puedelman, actually, yeah, we, we could be harsher uh, in terms of reprimanding you. Because pumasok ka dito, sinabi mo hindi kayo colorum. Pero clearly, nakita natin hindi ganon. So warning shot lang to ha. Huwag niyong ibalik yan, option na yan. Kung hindi, iko-contempt ka namin dito. So Senator J. Yes, Madam Chair, before we end, uh, although um, probably all the companies here no, sa motorcycle taxis, the courier services, know that this committee under... Chairman Grace has been very supportive of uh, this uh, program. But I just want, meron kasi mga issue rin that I want to be addressed also. No? Kasi may mga report that uh, during rush hours, nagkakaroon ng price surge. No? That's, that's natural kasi po, peak hours yan. Ang problema daw, yung pong surge, hindi naman daw nabibigay yung sa driver yung yung uh, kaukulang price increase. So that has to be addressed by siguro quickly lang po. Siguro ang gas, joyride, and others may address this. Kasi ano to issue? Although we support this, no? Pero kailangan din na masagot nyo rin siguro itong issue ito. Siguro, George, please. Um, uh, um, Senator um, Ejercito, we don't have price surge po at this point. Thank you. Okay. Joyride, si Mr. Meneses. Senator, uh, wala, pong, wala po kaming surcharge. So, sino meron sa Grab? Yun sa, sa four wheels lang ba yun? So, sa two wheels, wala tayong surge, even peak hours. So, si Grab na lang. Probably, if you can, uh, Mr. Lim, uh, if uh, you can uh, address this complaint. Uh, it's so the, difficult to get, ano eh, um, um, to book every peak hours. So, yeah. but, and then there's a surge. So does it go to the driver? You... Yes, the 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 the, the bulk of the uh, so maybe uh, explain the purpose of of search first. So because we are marketplace, um, the mechanism of a search is to allow the marketplace to find a price in which you can balance demand and supply. So whenever there is a lack of supply, meaning lack of drivers on the road, there will be a search. And as a result, drivers are encouraged to come onto the platform, earn a little bit more, and we can fulfill the the, the demand. So um, the, the, that's how the search works. And the, the search mechanism is um, regulated by LTFRB as well. Um, the second point I would say is that uh, because of COVID, there has been some quite deep disruptions in terms of the marketplace. And so during um, before COVID, um, uh, during COVID, a lot of the drivers have left the industry. And so when, for example, during the Christmas period, um, uh, gratefully, the economy uh, activities surged back again for Philippines, um, we find that there was a, not a lot of drivers left. And so there was quite persistent surge. Um, we're quite grateful that the supply has started to come back uh, with the support from LTFRB as well. Um, we're also seeing prices actually have come down about 20% on the four-wheel side uh, since uh, December. And with more supply coming in, we, we are quite hopeful that the, the price of uh, um, right healing for four wheels at least would, um, would become much more um, moderate. But does the every time does, there's a surge, of course, that's part, I explained it, the reason yes. for this uh, feature, does it go to the driver as well? Yes, so uh, we, we will take our commission so that we can, of, of course, invest in the, in the platform, but most of the uh, search money goes to our, our drivers. Again, that's also part of the design so that we can encourage drivers to, to come online and, 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 and serve. Even during peak hours, that's yes. difficult. Yes, yes. Yes, yeah, sometimes because I order, especially peak hours, it's difficult to book even for delivery. So you need priority so that they will uh, accept because it's big R, so that's part of the program. Yeah. Anyway, before we end, Madam Chair, again, thank you. I'd like to congratulate, um, not congratulate, but give recognition to what the motor ta motorcycle taxis have been doing, no, right, daily, um, for safety. No? And uh, again, as a rider myself, I, I, I'm, I'm a witness on on the discipline that they have compared to others. So hopefully, we ca it can, it can uh, rub off 
to other riders as well. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Before I recognize Senator Nancy, Ms. Hamon, Grace? Yes. Thank you for uh, the committee's insistence that I come. I came from Cebu. Uh, I'm based there. But I could not miss this because I was there from the beginning. And, and congratulations to, uh, of course, our chair, na inahandle niya to in Tagalog at naintindihan ng lahat, pati publiko. Uh, congratulations for the pilot. Ang tanong, hanggang kailan tayo magiging pilot? So I would like to suggest that I think marami ng panahon at marami ng learnings ang natutunan natin. So let's got, get down to business and legislate this one into a policy so that everyone will be protected. Salamat din sa agad-agad na pagsagot kasi totoo yun. Uh, uh, violation po ng practice yan, uh, fooling the public that, uh, ano lang, no? Fooling the public. Sorry, I'm so blatant, yeah. But this group has raised the bar very high in terms of training, institutionalization pa, sa TESDA. Si George may vision talaga eh, at saka itong mga nag-comply. So, nakakatawa po, because this is very important to making now the law. I think let's sit down and do the law so that Regulation can happen, protection can happen for both riders, yeah, and the owners also as well. Thank Very you. beautiful uh, summary, uh, Ms. Hamon. Thank you. Siguro pag retired na si George, siguro pag mga 60, pwede ka nang mag-LTFRB. Hindi. <laughs> 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 hindi, 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 hindi ngayon. Pero pag, pag matanda ka na, eh, bata ka pa eh. Pag, ano, Sayang, na, Madam Chair, may opening pa naman ngayon. <laughs> Nako, teka, controversial ata to ha. Ewan ko kung bibitawan ni George yung ano, sa bagay, his wife can help. Oh. Anyways, ka Nancy, you're right. Two points, Madam Chairperson. Well, one, magkano ba yung ano, take-home pay ng ating mga riders? Siguro this is one way to encourage more players kasi parang based on your statement today, mukhang parang declining yung um, interested na pumasok sa ganitong trabaho. And then second point, um, ano ba yung grievance mechanism? Kasi, Madam Chair, kung hindi pa tayo nag-hearing ngayon, hindi natin malalaman na may uh, ganun palang violation itong um, Taxi Philippines. Yung grievance. Ah. So, those two points. I, I guess, yes, George, please answer how much yung take home and then yung grievance mechanism. I'll give you the average po. So, the average full time is roughly around 1,000. 1,500 pesos yung gross. Mga dalawang daan yung gasolina for the day. And roughly, for a good motorcycle, mga 200 pesos yung lumalabas na daily loan rate. Yung, yung binab kung i-araw-araw mo yung monthly interest, 200. Tapos pagkain, another 100 siguro, minsan may baon sila. So mga 1,000 pesos yung take home. Pag part-time, ang take home nila, roughly around 800 the thereabouts doon po naglalaro so, full time ilang oras sa isang araw yon uh, yung oras basically 4 hours sa umaga 4 hours sa gabi kasi yung yung sa gitna matumal At talagang morning rush hour and evening rush hour so, lang ibig po ibig mo sabihin mas malaki sa minimum wage yung kinikita nila bawas Opo. na lahat 1000 take home oo uh, malaki po yes Pero, even Madam in Chair, the province konti lang po yung discount hindi rin po naglalayo Pero Madam Chair, wala pa yung mga hulog sa SSS? Wala pa. Ano lang po, ang tin tinanggal ko lang po doon loan, yung loan sa motorsiklo, we assume that, yung gasolina, pati yung pagkain doon sa araw na yan. Because at some point, Madam Chair, gusto rin naman natin na maging member sila ng PhilHealth, ng SSS, saka ng pag-ibig. Pero sa 1,000, mga magkano yung SSS doon? 1,000 a day. So that's, let's say they work uh, five days a week, so that's 20,000 pesos a month, okay? So, sino ba dito yung mga alam sa HR? Mga magkanong SSS nun? Di ba percentage? Alam ko lang pag-ibig, 100 pesos. A month? A month. So siguro, hindi naman ganun kalaki. So it, it has to be encouraged na lang. So, Ma'am, marami po sa, sorry Madam Chair, may I? Uh, marami po sa kanila actually SSS at pag-ibig. What we do is we, we have a kiosk in the office and we help facilitate. We pay it in their behalf. 
Tapos as um, fringe benefit po, we offer not necessarily government benefits, but other benefits like health insurance, yung mga ganun po. Pero kayo wala kayong share? Wala po. They're considered independent contractors. Okay. Kasi hawak po nila yung oras nila. We cannot mandate them to work uh, a day or a time. Thank you. So yung second question, yung second point, yung katulad nito na na discover natin ngayong hearing na to na may ganung violation. Um so kanina pwede magsumbong. Syempre dapat mabilis automatic LTFRB kami po. Da ganun ang sagot. Actually, Madam Chair, uh, there are we the office receives complaint Ang, uh, ang LTFRB. However, we forward it to the MC Taxi Technical Working Group. Sila po ang nag-handle po if there are complaints. Sino yon? Sino yung head doon? Uh, si Attorney Chofi Loguadis. Ba't wala siya dito? Hindi namin kasi siya kilala eh. Paano siya makikilala nung iba? <laughs> But anyway, okay. So, make it clear na lang. Maybe put up a desk in LTFRB. Put it in your website. If you have any complaints about the MC taxis or whatever, doon na lang pumunta. But, I... Hindi, yun lang, Madam Cher. Kasi nga, kung hindi pa tayo nag-hearing ngayon, walang ganitong kabilis na solusyon. So, maybe, can you just submit to the committee kung... Ilang complaint na ina-receive niyo with regards to taxi? Ilang pa, Madam Chair. Thank you. Yes, we will do, Madam Chair. Okay. First of all, I think we, we have to end this in a, in a good note. And that is, I think we're, we have strong support to legislate uh, legalizing motorcycles for hire so that there is stability also in that sector. Hindi yung parang... Pag nag-iba, ihip ng hangin, iba na yung head ng LTFRB, iba na naman yung policy. So we want to institutionalize this and we'd also like to thank those of you who participated uh, for setting a good standard. Uh, we, we definitely have a need for this right now. So to our resource persons, thank you for your time. Medyo lagpas na for lunch, but... Uh, Uh, I hope, uh, Mr. Lim, I hope you have a nice time here in the Philippines. When are you leaving? Tomorrow? That's not enough time to explore. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure George can show you around. Yes. With the Ancash. <laughs> yeah, with the Ancash. We have a delicious food here and um, a lot of things to do. So enjoy your one day here in the Philippines. So to everyone, thank you very much. This meeting is now adjourned.